So when we have numbers, um, we learn about different types of numbers. We have real numbers, and we have complex numbers, and we have all types of things happening. Uh, part of complex, we have, or I guess separate, imaginary numbers. And the reason we have all these different types of numbers is because once you start using numbers, and if you keep exploring, 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 and applying numbers to different types of studies like science and engineering, you run into these situations where real numbers just aren't enough. And that's why we have complex and imaginary numbers. Now, in this video, we're not going to talk about imaginary or complex, but we should say that there are other types of numbers, more than you would experience uh, in your average classroom, especially in middle school. So the real numbers. Well, what's in the real numbers? Well, we have irrational numbers. That's a, a group of its own. It's a special group that we'll talk about. There's, and then there's rational numbers. Now, there are many different kinds of rational numbers. And that's what we're going to talk about. And we're also going to talk about irrational numbers. And these are all part of the real numbers. So what kinds of rational numbers are there? Well, we have counting numbers. We have integers. We have whole numbers. And another name for counting is the natural numbers. OK, so we have all these types of numbers. Counting are natural, integers, and whole numbers. And they're all part of rational numbers. And then they're, they're all part of the real numbers. And there's irrational numbers. So let's, let's connect all this stuff. Now, now, where do we start? I think the best place to start is here with counting or natural numbers. OK, so what are the counting numbers or the natural numbers? This is one of the groups that I think are easiest to remember because they only include numbers that are naturally occurring and tangible. You can hold them, you can think about them. Um, so we start at one. Zero is not a counting number because it's concept. It's the absence of something. But counting our natural numbers start at one and we count up to two. There's no one and a half or 1.1. There's no two and a half. The next number is three and then four. And then well, we keep going. We never stop. And what they might ask is to describe a subset of the counting or natural numbers, then you could pick any counting or natural numbers from the set. So this is a set, by the way. Sorry, I shouldn't explain what that means. A set is a group of numbers. And a subset is made from that set. That is a group of a set. So they might ask you, is this subset, let's make it up to 150 and 3,000, a s part of the counting numbers. They would ask you, is that true? Well, the answer is yes, because all these numbers, if I counted, eventually I get to get to those numbers. And then we find that we need more than just the counting numbers. We also need the number zero. And that's where whole numbers come into play. Whole numbers are almost identical to counting numbers, with one exception, that it also includes zero. So with whole numbers, we start at 0, then we go to 1, and 2, and 3, and so forth. Find a way to remember that 0 is a whole number. You could remember that counting only um, includes things you can count, and you really can't count nothing. So whole numbers start at 0. But still, that's not enough. We have uh, numbers that deal with negative values or below 0, and that's where the integers come in. So integers are just like whole numbers, so 0 and 1 and so forth, but they also include the opposites. So it has 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, 3 and negative 3, and so forth. So integers also include negative whole numbers. So let's say the number negative 1. If we describe this number, we would say it's an integer. True that it has no fractional part, and it is a whole number, but it's a negative whole number, so that's an integer. If I had the number 0, well, 0 is a whole number, and it's an integer. It falls in both categories. If I had the number 1, you could say 1 is an integer, it's a whole number, and it's a counting number. 
And let, so let's say we have rational numbers. This includes all the types of numbers we've seen already. It includes counting numbers, whole numbers, and integers. And it also includes fractions and decimals. So what we define it, a rational number, we say, let's say you take one integer and put it over another, and a is an integer, and b is an integer. If you do this, you're writing a rational number. So 3 over 5, that's rational. The number 10, that's rational because it's 10 over 1. Anything that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. Now, this confuses many people because this says that if I write any number as a fraction, I've got a rational number. Are there other types of numbers? What about point 0.3 repeating? At first glance, this number might seem like something else, but you could write this as one third. So that's rational. So are there other types? Yes. Irrational numbers are not in the same group as rationals. They're all part of the real numbers, which we described before, but irrational are separate. Numbers like the square root of 2 and pi and so forth, we cannot write these as any type of fraction with one integer over another. Now, in another video, I do describe how to figure out what an irrational number looks like and how to tell if a decimal is rational or not.